Hello, I hope you're doing well. We are going to do a short little practice just to get the body moving a little bit. So feel free to grab any props that you might need. Maybe it's a block or blankets if you need some extra cushioning. But we are going to start in a comfortable seated position. The spine is nice and long. The shoulders are pulling away from the ears. Allow the sit bones to ground down and turn the earth beneath you. Allowing one hand to come to the heart and one hand to come onto the belly. I want you to start focusing in on the breath. With each breath in, I want you to notice as the belly puffs, puffs out and each exhale out as the belly goes in. And also let this breath connect with the heart. Allowing that breath to fully fill the body with each inhale and each exhale. We'll let the hands come to heart center. Maybe you set an intention for the practice today. Maybe it's something specific or maybe you're just kind of going with the flow. And then when ready, releasing that intention of overhead. As we exhale, that left hand is coming down onto that right knee, right hand coming behind you. The spine stays nice and long. And then we're gonna lift that right arm up overhead. And as we exhale, we bring that right hand onto that left knee. Tuck that chin and curve the spine, just like that cat back. Nice big inhales and exhales here. Now listen up with our next breath, we're going into those eagle arms. So you're lifting those arms from your knees and maybe the backs of the hands just meet or maybe the palms of the hands meet. Squeezing in, finding that release in the shoulders. Let's inhale those arms up. Exhale, release the arms, go ahead and fold on over. Allowing yourself to soften on over the legs. Feel that release in the back and the hips. Inhale, let's lift back up. Now you can keep the legs exactly as they are. If you want to find opposite leg in front, go ahead and do so. Inhale those arms up overhead once more. As you exhale, that right hand is coming down onto that left knee, left hand coming behind you. Keep that spine nice and long for me. Release that left hand from the ground, reach it up high. As you exhale, let that left hand come down onto that right knee for that twist. Now bring that chin into the chest, round that back for me. Our next breath, we lift up those arms, lift that torso again, maybe the backs of the hands or maybe the palms meet. Finding the eagle arms on this opposite side. Squeeze it in tight. Nice big inhales and exhales here. Lift those arms up. Exhale, fold on over, release those hands. You might notice that the forehead rests upon the mat this time. Noticing as the body maybe softens a little more as you start releasing some of that tension you were holding on to. All right, let's lift on up with that next breath. 
We're gonna let the hands come behind us, undo the feet. So the soles of the feet are planted down. I'm gonna show you the sideways option so you can see a little bit better. So those hands are behind the back. The feet are grounded down nice and firmly. We're going to push the feet into the mat, lift those hips up towards the sky into our reverse tabletop. Maybe the head drops down in between the shoulders or the head can stay up, but I want you to focus on those hips reaching high. Next breath, allow the hips to come back down, gently bring that head with you. Cross at the ankles and go ahead and let the hands come forward. We're making our way into our tabletop. Those hands are underneath the shoulders, the knees are underneath the hips. That spine is nice and long. Breathe. Now before we make our way into our downward facing dog, I want you to walk those hands a handprint forward or maybe a little bit more. Now allow those forearms to maybe come down. Now this will be your modified puppy pose. This might feel more than enough and just fantastic. Or if you want, you can keep those hands forward, allow that heart to just shine on down, keep those hips up towards the sky. Few breaths here. Breathing into the tight spaces of the shoulders, seeing if you can ease the breath there. Maybe you notice that belly expanding on the tops of the legs and coming in with each exhale. Very good. Let's roll on up into our tabletop. Hands are underneath the shoulders once more. Let's tuck those toes under and lift those hips up high, downward facing dog. Start pedaling out the feet, finding some movement stretching out the backs of the legs. All right, settle in. Allowing those hips to reach up high as the heels maybe ease down. They don't have to touch the ground. Push the mat away from the floor with the hands. You're just kind of on the pads of the fingers or of the hands. Left foot stays down, right leg will reach up high. Bend that knee, stack those hips. Coming back into our three-legged dog, reach that right leg up high. As we exhale, we take a smooth step forward. Low runner's lunge. Let's let that right knee drop on down, untuck those toes. Inhale those arms up overhead, reach up high. With our next breath, we'll let those hands come on down, framing that foot, allow the hips to go on back. Right toes up towards the sky, drag that right heel. Coming back into that right foot, tuck the back toes under, lift that back leg. We're stepping that left foot up to meet the right top of the mat. Relax on over those legs. You can have a big bend in the knees. That belly might rest on the tops of the legs. I want you to let that torso become heavy as you fold on over here. Let's inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, completely relax over. Inhale all the way up to standing, reach up high. Good. Grabbing a hold of that left wrist with that right hand, we're side bending on over towards the right. Now, if it feels better to release that right hand from that left wrist, go ahead and let it drop down. Really focus on that stretch on that left side body. Find that space in between the ribs for the breath to go. Let's inhale, come back up to center. Reach up high, left hand might grab a hold of that right wrist as you side bend to the left. 
option of dropping that left arm alongside you, noticing the length now in that right side body. Inhale, bring it back up, reach up high. As we exhale, we're swan diving out over those legs, so hinging from those hips as we let that back stay flat as possible as we fold on over. Inhale, come up halfway, create that number seven. As you exhale, I want you to let the hands plant down as you step the feet on back. High plank. We're gonna let the knees come down. The hips will go back, child's pose. Coming back to the breath, back to your intention. Noticing the breath. With each inhale, know you are breathing in. And with each exhale, know that you are breathing out. Let's drop those hands there back underneath the shoulders, the knees are underneath the hips once more. That spine is long. Now tuck those toes under, lift those hips up towards the sky, downward facing dog. Notice the second round of downward facing dog if it feels a little different. Maybe you still pedal at the feet to get that stretch behind the legs. I sometimes even like to let the hips kind of fall down side to side. Eventually settle in. Right foot stays grounded, left leg is reaching up high. Bend that knee, stack those hips. I want you to keep those shoulders straight on. Back into our three-legged dog. So extending that left leg up towards the sky. As we exhale, we take a smooth step forward, low runner's lunge. Right knee is dropping on down, untuck those toes. Let's lift those arms up overhead. Nice big inhales and exhales. Notice the strength of the body, the space in the heart. And begin to notice the breath. Has it changed? Is it the same? Is it steady? With each inhale, know you are breathing in. And with each exhale, know that you are breathing out. Allow the hands to come down, framing that foot. Hips are drawing on back, left toes up towards the sky. I want you to keep in mind, you can always stay up higher rather than coming down so low. You can even use blocks right underneath the hands to kind of keep you a little steady if you'd like. Maybe you fold on over that leg, humbling in. We're making our way back into that left foot. Tuck the back toes under, lift that back leg. Nice and strong with that left foot. Maybe you come up onto those fingertips, that right foot becomes nice and light. Let's step it forward, top of the mat. Relaxing on over those legs once more. I want you to notice the second round and this forward fold. If we're able to find a little bit more ease, a little less extra effort, Let's come up halfway, create that number seven. Exhale, fold on over. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, reach up high. Exhale, those hands down to heart center. We're gonna find the strength now in that right leg. That left foot becomes nice and light. So we are lifting that left leg on up as that right leg stays nice and strong, nice and sturdy. Keep that left foot flexed. You can always have a wall close by to kind of help you, especially if you're just learning or gaining that strength in that right ankle. Okay, I want you to stay maybe close to the wall. And maybe if you want to try, you can let that right hand come outside of that left leg, that left arm reaching behind you. Know that there are some days this doesn't happen. Some days we're a little bit more wobbly than others, and that's okay. We just get back up and try again. 
And each time we become a little bit stronger. Let's come back to center. Keeping that strength in that right leg, that left leg is going to reach on back. Allow yourself to come down onto the toes. So I'm gonna face this way so you can see me a little better. So that right knee is bent, that left leg is long, up on the ball of the foot. Breathe. Allow the hands to fall down alongside you. We're interlacing those fingers behind the back. Pull that fist down that left leg. Open up that heart, that chest. Now, if you'd like, you can seal that left foot on down at an angle, but we're exhaling, coming down inside of that right leg. Those arms are maybe coming up off the back. The closer the palms are together, the more intense the stretch. Breathe. Good, I want you to let that fist come down to the low back, bend the elbows, release that grip. We're taking those hands towards that left foot. If it's not grounded, you wanna go ahead and ground it before moving on to this point. So letting it ground down, maybe the toes face a little bit more on the long side of the mat. I want you to bend that left knee, allow the right toes to come on up. Maybe those hands stay down on the floor or on the mat. They might come up to heart center, but maybe it's just one hand that comes up and you kind of play with that balance, that lightness of letting one hand come up at a time. Okay. Our next breath, we're gonna let that right foot come on down. So those hands are inside of that left leg. Walk those hands towards the inside of that right foot. You're gonna bend that right knee. Right hand will stay down onto the mat or maybe a block or a book. Left hand is just coming to the hip, okay? I want you to focus on opening up that heart, opening up that chest, that left shoulder is facing up towards the sky. If you're ready, maybe that left arm will reach up high. Very good. We're pushing with that right hand to lift ourselves up. So bring that torso on up. Right palm is flipping towards the sky. Left hand is coming down onto that left leg. Right arm is reaching up and over. Keep that bend in that right knee just for a second. Now go ahead and straighten it out. You're gonna keep that little micro bend still in there. So we're not fully extending it. Feel the breath moving through that right side body now. That space being created all alongside that right side body from those right fingers to the right toes. Our next breath, we open up those arms side to side. Maybe you take a peek over the left hand versus the right hand. And as you take this peek over this left hand, I want you to let that right hand reach forward. Reach it forward, reach it forward, keep that eye on that left hand. Right hand is going to come down, left arm will rise up high, triangle. Now if this is a little too much of a strain for the neck, I want you to bring that gaze down towards the floor. And breathe. We're keeping the spine long. The heart is open. Allow that breath to still fill that belly, feel that expansion and that contraction or that going in of the belly. Notice the breath here. How has it changed? How is it different? Allow that left hand to come down onto that left hip. Bend that right knee, let's lift that torso on up. Allow that right hand to come to the hip. Right toes are facing the long side of the mat. Let's heel toe the feet together. Good. Now we're facing back top of the mat. If you need to walk on up there, go ahead and walk on up there. This time the Left leg stays nice and strong, nice and sturdy. That right foot becomes nice and light. Let's lift it up into our pillar pose. So I'm showing you the side angle this time versus the straight on forward. So you at least have two different angles 
to see and compare yourself with. Allowing that left leg to stay grounded down. It's rooting down into the earth. Engage that quad to keep you nice and steady. Right leg stays nice and light, breathe. Hands might be at heart center. Again, maybe you play with that twist. Left hand is coming outside of that right leg. Right arm will reach for behind you. Use the wall if you need to. But we're moving slowly, gently, mindfully. And if we fall out, we come back in. Knowing that every time we fall out, every time that we come back in after that fallout, we get that much stronger. Breathe. Come back to center. Gently, slowly, cautiously. Bend that left knee, a little bit of a bounce in there. Right leg is going to extend on back. Allow those toes to touch down. Keeping that bend in that left leg. Maybe adjust the feet as needed. Also a wider stance sometimes creates a little bit more stability. So if you're needing to open up that stance, go ahead and do so. And then let those arms reach up high. We're gonna let the hands come down behind us. Interlace the fingers. Now you're gonna notice the same thumb is on top. I want you to move them down, all one. So the opposite thumb is on top now. Pull that fist down that right leg to open up that heart. And as you exhale, coming inside of that left leg. Again, if you need to seal that right foot on down, seal it down. Those hands are coming off the back, reaching up high. Breathe. Allow the neck to become soft. It likes to kind of clench. Bring that fist back down towards that low back. Gently release that bind. Seal that right foot on down if it's not already sealed down. And allow that left hand to come down inside of that left foot. Right hand might stay on the hip, but notice here as that shoulder opens up towards the sky. Keep in mind, you can always come onto the fingertips. Sometimes that's all that's accessible to us and that's okay. So finding your variation that works for you, or maybe that arm reaches up high, okay? We're breathing into the hip now. Noticing the stacking of the shoulders, the opening of the heart, the lengthening of the spine. Exhale that right hand on down, right next to that left hand. And we're gonna walk those hands on over towards the right toes. Maybe the right toes face more the long side of the mat. Bend that right knee, allow the left toes to come on up. We're in our skandasana on this opposite side. Again, you might play with keeping those hands down, maybe one at a time, or maybe this side, you try with both of those hands up, see? Even I fall, and it's all okay. Feeling a little wobbly today, but as you see over time, over practice, we're able to do it, we're able to come in. Sometimes we have to fail 99 times for that one time, but it makes it all worth it. Breathe. All right. We're gonna come back into that left foot. So Spider-Man walking these hands on down. Let that left foot seal down. Find your balance. Keep that left knee bent. Lift that torso on up, warrior two. Left palm flips up, exalt. Right hand down onto that right leg. Left arm reaching up and over. So sometimes the chest kind of has a mind of its own. I want you to see if you can notice that right shoulder pushing back, just a hair, to align those two shoulders together here. Good. 
Let's lift that right arm up high. Find that length in the arms. Now straighten that left leg. Keep that little baby bend in there. Bring that gaze over to that right hand. And then let that left hand reach forward. Keep that gaze on that right hand and then that left hand comes down as that right arm reaches up high. Again, maybe the gaze comes down towards the floor versus staying up towards the hand. Breathe. See if you can lift that chest up just a hair, allowing that heart to open. You're nice and light with that upper torso. Breathe. Maybe bringing your attention to the belly again. Seeing as it expands and as it contracts. Okay, now let's bend that left knee. Right hand might come to the hip. Bend that left knee, lift on up. Allow that left hand to come to the hip. Left toes angling in. Maybe you adjust those right toes. Let's heel toe the feet, nice and close. Into our mountain pose. So allow those hands to fall down alongside you. The toes are nice and wide, nice and open. Feel here as you bring that strength in towards the core. So almost like if you have um, something wrapping around the torso area to keep everything hugged in. That's what we're doing, engaging that belly, lifting that heart up towards the sky as, as well as the crown of our head. The eyes might close or become soft. Taking a scan of the body here. Beginning to notice the breath. Maybe the echo in the body from the movements we just did. Good. Letting the eyes flutter open if they were closed. We're making our way down onto our mat. So whether you have a specific way to get there, maybe it's yogi squat, or if you just kind of want to bend the knees and allow the knees to come down, that's all good too. We're gonna let the feet come forward. We're sitting on our mat, maybe midway or a little further back. And I want you to let that left leg come down. That right leg is coming right on top of that left leg. Now this is a pretty intense stretch, I'm not gonna lie. And we're really opening up those hip flexors. That right knee might be way up high. I want you to maybe bring a pillow or a blanket underneath that right leg, just to kind of help it. So this is still a little too intense. If you have that pillow or that block, Go ahead and lift that right foot and just settle it right in front. So imagine it being here. And this is just so we can still find that release in that right hip without it being too intense, okay? I want you to keep the feet flexed. The knee is ideally stacked over that ankle, ankle ideally over the knee. Sinus nice and long. Breathe. Now, if that wasn't enough, I want you to let those arms reach out to the side. Now we're gonna bend that right elbow down. Left hand is coming right on top of that right elbow. For a little shoulder stretch, keep that spine long. I want you to notice on keeping that spine long, that heart open and that breath going. When you're focusing on these three things, you might stop focusing on some of the other things. Maybe if you've had um, a little tension you were still holding on to in that lower body. Very good. Now let's release those arms. We're going to release the leg. So gently lift that leg. Allow that right foot to plant down. Hands are coming behind you. Left foot is coming on down. Just windshield wiper side to side.
All right, even up the sides, back to neutral. Right leg is down this time, left leg on top. Again, ankle, knee, knee, ankle. Feet are flexed, spine is long. Same options here if you're needing to adjust whether the pillow is underneath that leg or if you're needing to let that foot just kind of come a little bit forward. Spine is long. Allow the arms to open out. Inhale them up. As you exhale, we're bending that left elbow, right hand reaching a hold of that left elbow. Keep that spine nice and long. Keep focusing in on that breath. Allow the breath to move in through the nose, down the throat, the chest, into the belly. And feel as it reverses from the belly, chest, throat, and out through the nose. And through the nose, throat, chest, belly. Out from the belly, chest, throat, nose. We'll gently release that bind with the hands. Allow the hands to come behind you. Shift that weight back so you can undo the legs. Soles of the feet are planted down once more. Windshield wiper side to side. Good. Even yourself out if you haven't already. We're gonna let the soles of the feet stay planted down. I'm gonna move this way so you can see me a little bit better. Soles of the feet are planted down. Allow that spine to be nice and long. Those hands are reaching forward, that chin is tucking in, and start making your way down onto your back. Keep the feet grounded down as you curl down along your back. Maybe those arms reach back behind you once the shoulders touch down. Bring the soles or the heels of the feet a little bit closer in towards the bum. The fingertips might graze the heels or they might not. And then engaging the glutes, we are going to push away from the mat. So lifting those hips, allowing those hips to reach up high. Squeeze the knees in together, but have maybe just a tiny bit of a space. So we're not overdoing it, but not underdoing it, just that right in between that Goldilocks mix. Keep reaching those hips high. You're gonna start feeling on the outer part of the glute. We're here for three, for two, for one. Exhale those hips on down. Good. We're gonna do that one more time. So keeping the feet grounded, maybe the hands might even push into the mat if you'd like. You're gonna lift those hips up towards the sky. There's an option here of finding a bit of a shoulder stretch as well. It's a little more intense, but if you wanna try, feel free. We're gonna interlace those hands kind of underneath us, so underneath that tailbone. And then you shimmy one shoulder, shimmy the other shoulder right underneath you. So you have that bind of the hands right underneath the bone. Keep those legs hugged in for three, for two, for one. Let's undo those hands if you did that bind. Gently allow the hips to come back down, adjust the shoulders. Very good. Lengthen those legs on out, nice and long along the mat. So minor little lift and I have stairs right underneath my heels. But Hey, that happens, right? So that body is extended on out. Allow a hand to come to the belly, another hand to come to the heart. And start focusing again on that breath, on those inhales and exhales. Staying nice and long on the mat. If you have low back issues, it might feel a little bit better to bend the knees and kind of have the knees bent. You can always place the pillow underneath the legs as well. That kind of helps alleviate that pressure on the back. Good. 
And we're settling now in our final resting pose, our Shavasana. This is said to be sometimes the hardest pose in the entire practice. With stilling the body, sometimes we're able to still the mind. Sometimes the mind doesn't still and that's okay. I want you to notice as it maybe drifts off and bring it back to the breath. Back to those inhales and exhales, back to that rising and falling of the belly, of that heart, of the chest. Come back to the breath. here just for three to four more breaths. You can stay here longer, of course, if you'd like, pausing the video. After that fourth, fourth to fifth breath, I want you to start bringing awareness into the body, into the breath once more. Allowing that breath to become a little bit bigger, a little bit more pronounced. Wiggling the fingers and the toes. Maybe starting to find some movement in the shoulders and the elbows and the knees, the hips. Allow the body to lengthen, extending long. And as you exhale, allow the knees to come into the chest, giving yourself a nice big hug. You might find a little bit of a sway side to side that might feel nice. And then eventually we're falling on over either to the right or the left side, gently. And allowing that hand of the side you fall on to form a little pillow. The eyes stay closed or soft. Taking a few moments here to come back to that intention that you said in the beginning of class. Maybe it was that something specific or maybe it was just being aware of the breath, of where the breath goes and how it feels in the body. Pushing that hand that is not being the pillow into the mat to gently lift yourself on up. Coming back into a comfortable seated position. The eyes again, either soft or closed. Spine is long. Allow the palms of the hands to come up on the knees. As we take our next inhale together, we're reaching those arms up high, gathering in all that energy, everything that happened during our practice, allowing the hands to touch. Exhale them down to the third eye, so that forehead. May our practice be continuous and complete. Allowing the hands to come to the lips. May our words be true and kind. Allow the hands to come to heart center. May our heart be open and receiving. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today and for spending this time on your mat for you, for your self care. I hope it served you well, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you.